our family enjoyed a trip to Gardens Aglow on their opening weekend. Gardens Aglow is located at the Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens, which is in Booth Bay, Maine. This was our first trip to Gardens Aglow. In the previous couple of years, it has been a driving only event due to COVID, and this year they opened it back up to a walking event, and so we decided it was time to check it out. This event does take place in November and December in Maine, so if you're going to attend, be sure you dress warmly. We packed all of our winter gear that we would need for the occasion, drove the couple of hours to get there, and we were quite enamored with the scene that we found. During the 2022 season, Gardens Aglow runs from November 19th to December 31st, Thursday through Sunday, plus a couple of other select dates. The magic begins as the darkness falls, so this event occurs from 4 to 9 p.m. Gardens Aglow is described as New England's most beautiful light display. This year's light display features more than 750,000 energy efficient LED lights, which if laid end to end is around 66 miles of lights. There are over 300 lighted sculptures of familiar flora and fauna, all created by hand, including three moose, a ruby-throated hummingbird, several ducks, geese, a fox, a turtle, two owls, dragonflies, 250 flowers, and two dozen assorted mushrooms. The sculptures are inspired by native species. Gardens Aglow uses special high-efficiency LED lights that use less than 1.5 watts per strand. LED lights use 15 times less energy than incandescent bulbs. The entire staff of the Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens, as well as many volunteers, participated to make this show possible. It took 100 people nearly three months to decorate the gardens. The Gardens Aglow route is approximately one mile in length, and it takes visitors usually one to two hours to take in the whole display. Our family spent about three hours at Gardens Aglow on the evening that we went. I think we could have done it in one to two hours, but I was working on capturing lots of footage for this vlog, so I took my time doing that. I will say that by the time we left, our fingers and toes were quite frozen. I'm thankful that on the evening we visited, while the weather was chilly, it was dry. But it is important to note that the Gardens Aglow event does stay open even in the rain, and it is said that the displays showcase an extra sparkle when it's raining. But as a general rule, they only close during major unsafe weather events. The Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens does also have a garden shop which is open during Gardens Aglow. The garden shop has many items from artisans, local makers, and environmentally conscious merchants, and every purchase, even if online, is powerful. Every sale directly supports their mission to inspire meaningful connections among people, plants, and nature through education, horticulture, and research. While we did not utilize this feature ourselves, it is important for you to know that there is a shuttle on Saturday nights that runs from downtown Booth Bay Harbor to the gardens starting at 3.45 p.m. and running through the event. The last ride to the gardens leaves downtown around 7.45 p.m. and the last ride back to the downtown area from the gardens is by 9.15 p.m. The shuttle is located at the Booth Bay Harbor town office slash fire station at 11 Howard Street in Booth Bay Harbor. You can make the most of your visit to the region by exploring Booth Bay Harbor's beautiful downtown, shopping, or eating in a local restaurant, and then taking that convenient shuttle to the gardens for Gardens Aglow. All guests riding the shuttle should have their tickets for Gardens Aglow ready. If you're hoping to make your trip a one-stop situation, there are some food options available. There are some concessions in the Bosarge Family Education Center and in the Snack Shack, plus there is kettle corn and blueberry crisp along the route. The cafe that is located at the Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens will be closed for renovations during the time that they are open for the 2022 season. The 750,000 LED lights that were used in this year's display are woven through 14 acres of central gardens. On the evening that we visited, Maine had not received too much snow thus far, and the little bit that we had gotten a few weeks prior had mostly melted, so you won't see much snow in any of the footage from this evening, but I have seen footage and pictures of other people's trips during times when there was more snow, and it seems even more magical if that's possible. There's something about seeing that layer of snow on the branches of the trees and the lights peeking through that snow. So if I had the opportunity to visit again this season, I would wait until there was snow on the ground. But without that being a guarantee that we'll get snow before the Gardens Aglow feature closes, 
we wanted to just go and make sure that we got our trip in so like i mentioned earlier we did attend on opening evening and you can see here that the water but little bodies of water had started to ice over nothing that was super thick but it was a chilly evening when we went i think it was in the 20s by the time that we went and the sun was down so also like i mentioned earlier our fingers and toes did get chilly and you can see the cat the the kids had hats and mittens to try to keep them warm and brandon and i brought hat and mittens as well so that was a great strategy i would have also if we were to go again i would have brought in some of those disposable hand warmers for each of us just to take the edge off a little bit um, so that the tail end of our trip would have been slightly more enjoyable we loved our trip and wouldn't have changed anything about it we went on a saturday night knowing that it would be a later evening and we would want to have sunday to rest before the work week began again and overall it was a beautiful trip it was incredible to see all of these lights in one location i imagine that we will want to visit gardens aglow again in the future this scene right here we talked about quite a bit as a family eli saw this area from a further distance away and he was brainstorming and hypothesizing about how he thought the lights were laid across the water and his idea was that there was a clearish tube that the lights were run through to keep them floating mostly on top of the water and it turned out that he was right and so that just felt really creative and interesting a just a um unique way to use even the water features that are located within the gardens. The layout of the lights and the different scenes that they created as well as sculptures is just so unique. I don't know that there's anywhere else that you could see this sort of display of lights. And I love that they based it off of a species that are local to this location and made it authentic like that. That's just kind of a step above to me. While the evening that we visited was quite busy, I would still say that we had an easy time navigating throughout the gardens and didn't feel like we were waiting unnecessarily in locations. The traffic was flowing at a steady pace. We were able to stop and take in different areas for longer if we wanted to and then hop back into the flow of the traffic in the area. Um, so even though it was busy and there were quite a few people there, it didn't feel overwhelming. It still felt like we had space to do our thing and that we weren't constantly getting in someone else's way. And that could be because it is a ticketed event and so they only sell so many tickets for each evening that they're open. So it, there is a max capacity of people that are going to be at the event. And I don't know what that max capacity is, but it seems like they have done a good job at choosing an amount because like I said, we felt like we were able to move about pretty freely. About a half a mile into the walk in the gardens, you'll get to this wooded section that has these lights wound tightly around the trunks of the trees. This was one of my favorite spots on the entire trek. I really appreciated the glow that was going on within that foresty feeling location. Um, you'll see my favorite section toward the end of the video, but this was up there in my top couple of favorites. Also among my favorites was this location. All of the beautiful white lights on this trellis-like structure just felt very elegant 
and magical and enchanting. And so walking through that space was quite a treat and just, just gorgeous. Love the white lights and then that little bit of purple coming up the columns, a very nice touch. A beautiful section of Gardens Aglow for sure. Right next to the area where you can get the kettle corn is this eating area and they had decorated it with a lot of these spherical structures that had lights wound around them and they really put it together in such a nice way, much like the rest of the gardens for this event, but I just really love those spherical structures within this location. So I did take a good amount of footage here because mm, you're not surprised I'm sure at this point it was another one of my favorite areas. Pretty little thing, you're a diamond in the rough, shining from within, I can tell that you're tough, just the sight of you when I'm at my weakest point, makes a world of difference, oh you make me strong, pretty little thing, you're a diamond in the rough, Shining from within, I can tell that you're tough. Ordering a cup of love, feel it rising up and above. You will always keep my heart and soul strong. Plant your seeds and watch them grow. The light will always know where to go. You will always keep my heart. As you entered into the portion of the gardens that is considered the children's gardens, you start to see all of these mushrooms and sort of these twinkling, almost fire-like lights within the trees. It's also where these swings are located. These make for a great photo op. Baby, you're my future and you are my past. Pretty little thing. You're a diamond in the rough, shining from within. I can tell that you're tough. Ordering a cup of love, feel it rising up and above. You will always keep my heart and soul strong. And also within the children's gardens, you get to this area, which is another one of my favorites. The lights are strung over top of the water in this location, and so because they're not actually making contact with the water like the ones in the tubes were, there is a reflection of the lights on that dark surface of the water. And that reflection makes it feel like there are twice as many lights as there actually are, which just feels so deeply enchanting. So it is an absolutely beautiful section. Be sure if you are able to visit to check this portion out. When we have visited in the summer months, this treehouse-like structure has been open for the kids to play on and I was pleasantly surprised to see that it was open this evening as well. The kids love this spot and they loved it tonight just like they always do. One way that the Gardens Aglow event differs from just a traditional visit to the Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens is that the one mile loop that is open for Gardens Aglow is just a small portion of the entire Botanical Gardens and not all of the space is open to the public during the Gardens Aglow event. You may notice a change in the quality of the content at this point in the vlog. Um, I had to switch from my camera to my phone. I had left my backup battery in the car. So my camera is able to capture the lighting of the evening just very differently than my phone is. I feel like they both did a good job and actually each one had different strengths. So I am kind of glad that I ended up using both for this event so that I can compare the content and um, just use that to help me learn even more ways to use each device and in which setting to produce the best quality content that I can. But um, if you're noticing a change in how the lights look, that would be why.
someone saw me taking pictures of the kids and offered to get a family picture for us, which I greatly appreciated because that adorable picture was captured. On our visit, we did not end up trying any of the food. We would have loved to have, but with the three hours that we spent there, we were pretty chilly and trying to extend the visit at all to enjoy some kettle corn or some blueberry crisp just wasn't going to be the best option for us. So we skipped all food, so I can't give a review of the food, but I am sure that it's delicious. As we were ending our visit to the gardens and headed toward the exit, we went by this giant troll. He is one of the Gardens of the Seeds created by Thomas Dombo. This is the only giant troll that is visible during the Gardens Aglow event. During the regular season, there are other giant trolls that you can visit with. The Guardians of the Seeds are one of the most talked about aspects of Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens during their regular season and they have a purpose. They have some teachings that they are trying to impart on people. So some of the things that the trolls stand for is saving seeds and planting more trees because forests keep us alive and by remembering to save seeds and plant more trees we can help keep them alive too. They also recommend reducing and reusing. When we rethink the way we pr produce and consume, we do something more powerful than just eliminating our waste. We also eliminate the idea of waste. And they also encourage discovering and sharing stories of the woods. We become better stewards of the environment when we get to know the nature in our communities. When you find things you love there, share them and help others expand their sense of wonder. The creator of the Guardians of the Seeds, Thomas Dombo, is considered the world's leading recycled materials artist, and he is famous for his troll sculptures. Dombo's pieces are staggering, and each sculpture simultaneously invites seekers into the depths of our woodlands while telling a story of conservation. Since Dombo's work uses recycled materials, it reinforces the value of using what we have to create something new, while also pulling together people of many skills and backgrounds from throughout our community. Each one of the trolls represents a part of a tree and tells a story about why every part of the tree is important to the whole forest. The giant trolls guard their 10 secret seeds, vital to preserving the forest's biodiversity for future generations. But the trolls are more than guardians, they are also teachers. We have already lost two species of trees from our main woods, the American chestnut and the American elm. If you'd like to learn more about the giant trolls and their mission, I will link the Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens website in the description box of this vlog. As our time at Gardens Aglow came to an end, we did make one more stop in Booth Bay before heading home. I had seen the sign on the way to the gardens for the buoy tree that is just a few minutes away from the Coastal Moon Botanical Garden, so we took a little trip over there. I had never visited the buoy tree before. It is located um, by Pier 1, and it is made of 925 buoys. While it was a quick stop, I am thankful that we went. This was a unique sight to see and it is beautiful in its own way.
That is going to be it for this vlog. Thank you so much for coming along with us on our trip to Gardens Aglow, as well as to the Bowie Tree. I really appreciate you spending some time here on my channel, checking out my content. I love that you are joining me and I hope that you'll join me again in future vlogs that I produce. Please make sure that you subscribe so that you'll get notified when I do put out new content. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. That also really helps my channel and my content. Thank you. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.